Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Divine Rose Garden. My name is Emily, and I am going to be talking about the themes that I am picking up on currently for 2024. So these are channeled messages that I have been receiving over time. Um, but I'll continue receiving messages throughout this video. So if you're interested in um, diving in and being open hearted and open minded to the likelihood of these things, these themes uh, occurring in your life, then stick around. Please hit that like button. If you want to get more um, updates like this, please subscribe. If you're not subscribed to my channel, thank you for letting me know down in the comments how you're experiencing these um, energies already. Remember, time is an illusion, really. Energies are, are constantly playing out uh, in different ways. Uh, in different time frames for everybody, depending on your own personal um, birth chart. Um, if you're a mystic, a light worker, a psychic intuitive, a healer, a guide in whatever shape or form you're, you're, you know, you're connecting to the divine on a daily basis, then you're probably feeling these energies already. And you're being confronted with having to really heal a lot and healing comes comes with a lot of um sacrifice the word sacrifice is coming through interesting you see that was not in my notes but it's coming through very strongly so it feels like a sacrifice for some in 2024 because you're going to have to sacrifice maybe a relationship or relationships or a job or um partnership, a marriage, you're going to have to sacrifice something. Something in your life needs to be let go of in order to really anchor in these energies in a more sustainable way, Spirit is saying. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and follow my notes. I don't want this video to be so long. I tend to ramble a lot. Uh, I'm a Virgo rising, so um, I am ruled by Mercury. I love to talk. And I can just go on and on and on. So I'm going to stick to what I, I was getting in my notes. But like I said, I'll be also channeling more as I, I as I speak to you in this video. Um, so this is for the collective, whoever stumbles upon this uh, video here on YouTube. This You were probably meant to see this and hear this. Um, I also practice astrology for the ones who don't know. So I will be mentioning astrological uh, energies, events, transits that uh, are very um, important to know and to understand when it comes to these energies that will be playing out for you. Okay, so for the first um, theme that I'm getting is strong, the need to look at one's unhealthy patterns in relationships, especially your coping mechanisms. Uh, these will be mirrored in your interpersonal relationships. So in your romantic relationships, in your friendships, in your, the relationships you have with your coworkers, with your students, with your clients, with your boss, with the employer, with authority figures, you name it. All relationships are on the table and they're acting as a mirror. So you're reacting to, you're getting triggered by these external people for a reason. Um, so the coping mechanisms that I'm currently picking up on now are blame games, mind games, manipulation tactics, power struggles, control dynamics. Okay, so really looking at that. So if you feel like you're being controlled and you're being restricted, how have you been holding yourself back in your life? Okay, so remember, as within, so without, we attract what we already are currently working through inside of our energy field. Um, so it's it's very easy for the ego to fall into those traps of mind games and, and blame, placing the blame onto others. And it's not to say that these other people are in the wrong or are actually doing harmful and detrimental things, but we need to start looking at how did I get here? How Why did I track this? It's going to be important to sit down and really process this. Um, yeah, so codependency in relationships. So what's codependency? It's, it's, I need you. I need to stay in this. 
because it's fulfilling a void. I'm insecure on my own. I can't, I, I can't function on my own. It feels unsafe to be on my own. It feels unsafe to let go of this power struggle, even though it's unhealthy and it feels super toxic. There's a safety and a sense of familiarity there that it's it's giving me. Um, whether that this is with jobs in the workplace, with people you know, in a relationship. And unfortunately, I'm getting that a lot of you or the people around you, you might see this, you might be the observer of all of this, right? And if you've been doing a lot of healing work and you've been really, you know, retracting your energy and holding space for yourself in the last year, this is going to be good for you because you're going to be able to see this play out in around you, whether that's in your workspace, in your family, in your friendships with your partner, with their family, with their friendship, you know, you're going to see this play out and you're going to have the tools to navigate through this. I'm getting for some of you, if you've done the work, if you've been on that in the rat race and getting super distracted by social media and social activities and being distracted by, you know, by life's responsibilities, by the human ways of being, then that's going to be, this is going to be a difficult year for you. I'm, I'm not sugarcoating anything here. I'm not going to say this is going to be sunshine and rainbows. 2024 is a hard year and I feel it mostly being difficult for people who are not heeding the call. And that call is going to get stronger uh, by the summer months. So the summer for us here in the um, Northern hemisphere, uh, winter for you guys in the in the southern hemisphere so summer months we're talking june july august it's going to feel like something's hitting you in the face and it's up to you to heed the call a lot of you i hear are going to be compromising your health and your finances they're saying finances so you know, you might be used to a certain lifestyle, they're saying, but the energies around you are not. Assisting you. In. They're not contributing to the influx of abundance because you're, you're staying in a situation essentially that is. From a place of lack from a place of fear, from a place of resistance of the old, resistance of the new, staying in something old because you're resisting the new. I'm also here children. Um, think of your children. I hear that, I'm hearing that a lot from the guides and angels and ancestors and, and from your deceased loved ones. Um, like think of your children, look at the example you're setting for your children by staying in a toxic marriage or staying in a job that doesn't, you know, make you happy, that drains you, that depletes you, whatever it is, whatever situation, interpersonal relationship you got going on that's depleting you, it's a sign. And your children are watching you in that and they're absorbing that energy and that's affecting them on a psychological level. So yes, I did write this down. Children's mental health and also behavioral issues stemming from family dynamics, unhealthy family dynamics. There's a lack of presence, they're saying, with parents. You're not present. Even though you, you think you are, you're not. You're not sitting, you're not breathing, you're not, you know, doing simple stuff, they're saying. A lot of parents tend to think that uh, being on the go and doing all these activities and doing, you know, always being busy, the schedule's full every weekend. That's not a way of being present, you know, trying to set an example to children is by teaching them how to really be in their energy by breathing, by doing something that really calms the nervous system, because I'm seeing a lot of children's nervous system being activated constantly because of their parents, because of the habits of parents in the home. Again, these messages are not easy. They're triggering. However, if you are in a place of receiving them, if your heart is open, your mind is open, there's a way to really make some, some 
great changes in your life that will contribute to your to your health, your well-being, and your children's health and well-being. So yeah, they keep saying, think of your children's health and well-being here and yours as well, because they are watching and they are being impacted by what's going on, whether that's in your marriage, in, in family dynamics, with other people in the family. Um, come back to center. Come back to center, they're saying. Okay, so now the next thing that I wrote down was about the North Node in Aries. So we've been um, working through the axis in astrology for the last, I believe, year, the axis of Libra and Aries. So the North Node is where we're headed. It's it's that unfamiliar territory that we have a hard time moving towards. We So we have to really um, learn lessons with our South Node. So currently the collective as a whole is learning the lessons of Libra. South node is karma, karmic lessons that we all have to follow and sign up for in order to move through the soul's journey towards Aries. That north node in Aries, I believe there's a, there's eclipses going on during the summer. I haven't taken a look at the dates, uh, but this is, again is not about the dates in astrology, but it's about the energy. So pay attention during the months of June, July, August, there's astrological things going on um, that are activating that North Node in Aries for everybody because everybody has Aries in their chart, okay? You're not just your sun sign. You are all the signs. When I look at, at a chart, everybody has every sign, every single person. You might have placements, more placements in one sign than another, but it doesn't matter. The areas of life in your chart are represented by a specific zodiac sign so let's look beyond and let's have a bigger perspective and move beyond the superficial zodiac sun signs okay because we're more than just the sun sign everybody will be activated in this axis depending on where it is in your chart and what house and what area of life the south node in libra and the north node in aries is in everyone's chart and will be highly activated for many of you watching here today in 2024, especially in the months of June, July, and August. So what does this mean? This is a call for assertiveness, independence, courage, leading by example. Aries is an energy of leadership, okay? Being true to yourself. Stop the people-pleasing tendencies they're saying that's libra that's the lower expression of libra people pleasing if i please others if i rescue others if i support others then i will feel that sense of love and security and safety and acceptance which is wrong it's all it's all an illusion it's a coping mechanism it's stemming from trauma um leading by example being true to yourself standing up for yourself being true to your needs okay uh, doing what's best for you. And that might mean disappointing other people because in order to fulfill my needs and 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 really look after me, that means that you got to go and do the same thing for yourself, right? I can't do that for you. Um, so whether that's, you know, again, with family, with relationships, at work, with your clients, you know, just with clients, if you're taking on clients every day, where are you people pleasing? Where are you not speaking your truth? Because a lot of these messages are really hard to deliver if you're in that people pleasing energy, right? Um, so getting out of that mentality where I'm going to tell you what you want to hear so that, you know, there's no confrontation and there's no fight and there's no, there's no animosity, but I think there's going to need to be a confrontation for many. Like I said, when those energies are highly activated with that North Node and that South Node in Libra, uh, more so in the summer months for us in the Northern he Hemisphere, um, that's going to squeeze a lot of people, you know? And, and that's my next note is that you're going to feel pressure cooker. Do I stay true to myself by staying in this? By enduring, by tolerating bullshit, by tolerating something that is clearly not making me feel good inside, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, physically, 
or do I choose to break free? Now, either choice or option or path you take comes at a price, right? In life, everything comes at a price. Nothing is easy. However, if you choose option A, to endure and to stay in something that is clearly making you sick or that is not helping your children, that is affecting your finances and it's affecting your well-being, then you got to ask yourself, is that a price that I want? That's the price that I have to pay by staying in something that is clearly toxic. Or do I take a leap of faith, right? So the Aries energy, the fool energy is I take a leap of faith. I trust in the unknown, which that's the price to pay when we're breaking free from something is I don't know what's on the other side. But that's the whole point of the soul's journey is you will never know what's on the other side until you make a clear and decisive choice. What are your intentions? So intentions, you know, choosing from a place of intention, clear intention, be mindful of why you're choosing this. And if you choose this, be honest about what's going to come out of that. Be real face the reality there is consequences by choosing something now if you choose to break free it will be it will require a grieving process because you're letting go of old ways of being it's hard it's hard to let go of attachments to let go of ways of being when you're constant you know for example if you're constantly someone who likes to keep up with people and who's constantly texting texting people and and socializing in that way, and you constantly need that hit of adrenaline or another hormone that I can't remember the name. You need you need that chemical every time. That's an addiction. That's a codependency. Spirit, if spirit is breaking down all your relationships or your friendships and removing people from your life, it's to make you understand that that pattern is unhealthy. So are you going to heed the call and say, okay, I, I understand what's going on here. I'm going to honor what's what it's bringing up for me because obviously you're going to feel some type of way about letting go of old things, of letting go of, of codependency, of codependent um, patterns. Okay, so I, I got some cards out and codependency always comes out. When I read for the collective, codependency. So this so it says addictions are affecting your romantic life. You're holding on to attachments, you know, and that's going to be a huge theme because I, like I said, the South Node is in Libra. And for the collective, that screams codependency. Doing things out of a place of guilt, maybe, out of, out of coming from a place of shame. If I continue to do this, then I'll feel like, this person will always love me or this person will always accept me or else I'll feel guilty if I let them go, if I if I abandon them. No, this is about not abandoning yourself, North Node in Aries. That's where the energy is pulling the collective towards. So there will be a pressure cooker, a squeeze, like how, how much can you take? And like I said, there will be consequences for many, whether that's with health, finances, your children, things will break down if we continue along that path uh, of least resistance, of, of resistance. You want to choose the path of least resistance, right? But letting go of resistance, letting go of fear. There's a lot of lower chakra density when it comes to holding on to something. You might have lower back pains, you might have stomach issues. The lower chakras are too active, are too active when you're in a place of fear and a place of fear of change, of letting go, of doing something different, of taking the plunge into the unknown, of doing something that you've never done before. It's staying in that really causes, causes an imbalance to the lower chakras. And this is why we have all sorts of physical ailments. Um, so pay attention to that. 
what else do I have here? Tower moments in the summertime. So this is what I wrote here. Many will walk away from unhealthy relationship dynamics. Some will be forced out, okay? Closing out karmic cycles. But they will be blessings in disguise. And that's another card that came out for you guys. Blessings in disguise will be painful at first, but God is liberating you. Can you see the miracle in letting go of something that is just over burdening you that is unhealthy that is not contributing to your health and well-being so on this card it says miracles and blessings everything has its gift you might not see it at first I mean, this is the ego you might not see this as a gift how is letting go of a relation a 10-year marriage a gift how is moving a gift right now when I, I don't have the strength and, and, and the energy to move? How is leaving a job that I actually need financially is a gift? How is this a gift? It will be shown to you when you let go of the need to control your outcomes. Okay, I just want to tune in here. How to deal with the pain, painful at first, like I said here, but God is liberating you, fulfilling your wish. This is actually answering an old wish, they're saying. They're trying to liberate you from something so that you can actually have what you deserve and want. Answering your prayers. So it comes down to, are you going to endure what's toxic, what's unhealthy? Are you going to continue pretending that this is for you? um convincing yourself rationalizing your your behavior rationalizing your choices your unhealthy choices convincing yourself that this is this is going good you're living in that delusion or actually breaking free like i said for some of you spirit will have to force you out and for others it will be painful slow burns signs there's going to be a lot of signs and synchronicities um that this is not working it's not in alignment are you going to listen your ancestors i'm hearing people who passed on are constantly going to be showing up whether that's in your dreams through song angel numbers or whatever it is that you connect your deceased loved ones to it could be a picture it could be um Anything, really. It could be a crystal, I'm hearing, a candle, um, a card. There's all sorts of things that you connect, you know, that loved one to. They speak to you through those things. Are you paying attention? That's it. That, that's all that's required is, hey, I'm, okay, I'm listening now. Show me the way. Really taking space to commune with the, the divine is my next point here slowing down removing things from your list that are unnecessary do you really need to go and do that thing do you really need to go and see that person do you really need to have a conversation and gossip because that's on my list unnecessary distractions removing unnecessary distractions from your day-to-day -day life is going to be essential if you want to thrive in 2024 Social media scrolling, mindless social media scrolling. Now, Pluto in is currently in Capricorn. We'll be moving into Aquarius in 2024. Pluto breaks things down. Pluto is about power. Where you are not empowered, it will break that shit down for you. So in Aquarius, this is about groups, friendships, community, technology, how we use technology to commune and to communicate uh, and to network, right? So without Aquarius energy, 11th house, um, how far do we use technology and how it's become detrimental to our mental health? How people become actually more antisocial and children as well. Ask teachers and they'll tell you that st the students in the classroom that they teach have become more antisocial with, with, with technology. How is that creating a healthy society where we actually know how to communicate our needs, 
and feel good and confident about expressing what we need and who we are. There's there's way too much of that going on and that's causing a lot of mental health issues in young people and in adults. So you're not out of the woods. If you keep scrolling, mindlessly scrolling and what's the point of all of that? What is the intention behind constantly scrolling? You gotta start asking these questions. And again, your children are watching you do that. I'm hearing that a lot of people who do that is because they don't have a purpose. They haven't, they're not, he, they haven't heeded the call to their purpose. Some of you, you're, you could be good writers. Creativity is a lot of untapped potential when it comes to expressing and really un unlocking those gifts. And that's my next point. So you see the next card that came out for the collective here is the arts with Sarasvati, the beautiful goddess Sarasvati is about the arts. Express your, yourself through creative activities. How is mindlessly scrolling on social media helping you create your life, a better life? Think about it. Is it depleting your energy? Is it making you feel bad about yourself? Is it making you feel depressed? It's like there's a lot of comparison that goes on when we're constantly on social media. We're left feeling worthless. We're left feeling like everything that we see is unattainable for ourselves, but it's humans created this. God didn't create this stuff. We did. And we are the one who the ones who have to dismantle this. So Pluto is about dismantling. Now Pluto stays in a sign for about 20 years, but then during those 20 years, it goes back and forth, it retrogrades. So it's going to be doing this little dance between Aquarius and, and Capricorn for a little while. It's going to probably go back into Capricorn in June, I believe. So again, we're moving back and forth. You're going to get a little taste of how, um, again, groups, how you associate yourself to groups, your friends. Your friends in 20 years are probably not going to look the same, but you're already getting little signs when Pluto enters Aquarius and then goes back into Capricorn and then goes back into Aquarius. You're getting these signs already, like, hey, look into this. Things have to change. Pluto's about transformation, deep, deep transformation of the psyche. So hanging around the wrong crowd was the next thing. These are all distractions that I'm naming that, that spirit wants, wants you to think about. So social media scrolling, gossiping, shopping, overspending do you really need another pair of shoes when you have like 300 in, in, in the closet or you know you know what I mean you have what you need think about these things because we're doing these things unconsciously and this is what spirit's trying to bring our attention to hanging around with the wrong people are these people actually uplifting you are they doing something interesting with their life that has purpose and that's changing people's lives and that's contributing to people's well-being i don't know you, you gotta ask that question you gotta you gotta you gotta see with with your third eye your spiritual sight needs clearing right but if you don't sit with yourself and really ask these questions and acknowledge what's out of whack then these things just keep happening things are just going to keep happening until you, you wake up that's the awakening process is shit's always going to hit the fan until you're like okay i'm done are you done? That's always a choice. Are you done? And when you're done, that's when you can invite spirit, the miracle of spirit into your life, into your energy. Walking away from friendships um, that are not contributing to your mental and well-being, people that don't take accountability, people that think they're always in the right, whatever they do and say they're in the right, they do nothing wrong. Everyone else is wrong. I'm right. Um, these are people that don't are afraid of growing. Okay. They are acting from a, um, an inner child wound, many inner child wounds. They're saying we want to give them love. We want to have compassion, but we don't want to get wrapped up in the drama that they are very, very, very much, uh, addicted to. So that codependency, that addiction, addiction to drama, is very, very common in today's society. So just look around, be the observer and see and observe 
wow, this person's really addicted to the drama that's being created here. Because if you're not addicted to drama, you shut that down right away. You place boundaries and you are very clear about how that shit doesn't work for you. An addiction to drama stems from a chaotic childhood, from an unpredictable childhood, from parents who were also very distracted. Okay, that's what I'm getting. Again, when you're walking away from people who are not in alignment, who you feel are, okay, I think it's time to close out this karmic cycle. I think, you know, thank you for the lessons. This was a, this was, you know, you, you always have to honor the contracts that you're, that you were in, whether that's with friendships, with coworkers, with family members, with romantic partners, you have to honor the contract and wish them well. I know that's not easy at first. And if you have been hurt and seriously abused uh, by these people, then it will take time to heal. And you do have to start with acknowledging your anger and your rage. So I'm, I'm pumping up, pumping out a lot of information here for you guys. Um, so yeah, if you want to take notes and pause and come back to this, um, please do so because there's a lot that's coming through here and I can, I can feel a lot of people going, oh my God, this is heavy. Um, yeah, welcome to my life <laughs> and to many of yours, I'm sure, who are uh, in this line of work. Um, where was I? It's not personal, it's vibrational, you know, I mean... Letting go of people is not always easy because you're letting go of an old identity of yours, but you are here to evolve. And this is what I tell my clients that come in, you know, for a, a birth chart reading. I'm like, look at your axis here, your north, your south node, your north node. You're supposed to evolve. And obviously, when we're evolving, we're letting go, we're shedding, we're dying. There's death, transformation, there's grief. They're stepping into the darkness a little bit, a little, a lot of it. You need to go into the underworld of Pluto, of, of the death. If you if you want to understand who you are and what you were and why you were doing those things and why you were attracting those people. So there's a lot to process here when you're saying goodbye to someone or to a specific group or to a specific dynamic. It's not an overnight, oh, well, I just let go of that person. I'm over it next that's called emotional bypassing. And this is why people after many years come back to their healer and say, well, I don't understand. I thought I healed this. Well, you kind of did not because you numbed yourself and you convinced yourself that you were done with this person, but you didn't process why that happened and how did that make you feel? Okay. So there's, there's some time to process things. And for many of you, I think it's going to be that it's a, it's about coming to terms with why certain things had to happen. And you've got to look at it from a spiritual pers perspective. If you're here on my channel, listening to me, the soul needed that experience. The soul wanted to learn. You guys, before incarnating, signed up to trigger each other in that way. I'm going to move on with my notes here. Okay, so yes, when you are ending things, saying goodbye to things, removing attachments to unhealthy things and people and dynamics and energies and places. Um, you come to this place of soul searching and, and it's normal to feel lost. And this is what I'm seeing. Confusion and feeling like you're lost. Like there's, you have no sense of direction. That Those are the symptoms of someone who's awakening someone who's going through a dark night of the soul, meaning, man, you let, you you just said goodbye and you just left an old version of you. That takes some time to process. Like I was saying, take some time to grieve. Can you allow yourself to do that soul searching? Give yourself that, that space. Honoring that time in your life is going to be really, really important. I think I'm speaking to a lot of mystics now, a lot of light workers who are, are feeling the squeeze and who are feeling the grief. And it's about being vulnerable now. Can you be more connected to your vulnerability? A lot of light workers are not vulnerable. And that's okay because we're all here to learn. We're all here to grow. But you'll see who's actually vulnerable with their with their audience, with the, with the people who are watching, with the people that they're helping and supporting. You have to 
be vulnerable with yourself first. You have to become, you have to learn how to be comfortable with weird emotions. I'm still learning. I am not there yet, but I'm learning and I'm acknowledging that there's there's a need for vulnerability. There's a need to really hear those parts of yourself that are crying. Those inner children that need your love, nurturing, nurturing your, your, your att their attention, your attention, your, your time. Okay, so the good news is here, when you cut ties with people or, or, or energies or whatever it is that you say goodbye to, you walk away from in the physical, right? We're talking physical. And you start doing the energetic work, the inner work, the emotional work, the spiritual work. Maybe you're going to start getting readings from people in order to understand why am I going through this? What am I going through? And by the way, you can get a, a birth chart reading that talks about what are the current transits? And this is something that I will probably be offering. It will be one of my offerings for 2024. I think a lot of people who had a birth chart reading are, are now ready to understand, okay, what's going on in my chart now? Because the birth chart reading is one thing, but then there's the current transits that are affecting your birth chart reading. So it's going to be a good thing for many of you to get these types of readings where, okay, What's going on now? Why am I going through what I'm going through? How can I navigate this better? That feels good to me. Uncomfortable, because that's part of the game. But at least I know that I'm being supported and that I'm not being led in the wrong direction. Okay, so there's reassurance, there's confirmation. There's me holding you in sacred space and letting you know what's going on and that it's going to be okay. And what you can do to relieve the tension, right? This is not about erasing and pretending like there's nothing happening, that there's, there's no pain. This is about using these tools, these spiritual tools like astrology, um, like prayer, like meditation, like therapy, in order to navigate these difficult energies and to bring a sense of peace and relief. You might not be happy and I don't think happiness is the goal of 2024 I think it's finding little windows of opportunity to be to be in a state of joy because I think we need to find those moments for ourselves and it's not from the external world finding those moments to be in a state of joy for yourself so that you get realigned with that inner child that needs more wonder and fun and joy, giving that to your inner self, to your inner child is going to be important in 2024. Finding times where you can be in alignment with joy, with music, entertainment, again, creative, expert, your creative uh, abilities. A lot, and that's my next point. The, a lot of you who are going to be on this journey, this inner healing journey during 2024, who's heat, who are heeding the call and who are letting go of things that don't serve them. Well, a lot of your gifts are going to be unlocked. And this is what happened with me and with many of you, I'm sure. It's through really difficult trials and tribulations in life where I, I made a promise and a commitment to myself that I wasn't going to go back to that that lifestyle where these gifts started appearing. I had no idea that I had these gifts. I knew that I was intuitive. I knew that I was empathic. I knew that I was on some level psychic, but I didn't think that this is what I would be doing, that I would, I would actually be offering these types of services to help people. So a lot of you, your gifts will be coming online, whether that's your intuition, your psychic abilities, creative abilities, um, talents, skills, a skill set that you never thought you had. It doesn't even have to be spiritual. It can be like dance, acting, creating, drawing, artistry, you name it. They're, they're, they're saying that you have gifts that have yet to be activated. Um, they will be unlocked when you have the proper codes. And that code is important. What code? 
do you need to access those gifts? It's that North Node in Aries code, right? Being true to yourself, stepping into authenticity, placing boundaries, doing things differently now that are more in alignment with your health and well-being and where you're going. That's the code. Easier said than done, but now it's a time of integrating it if you're at that point in your life in 2024. So making room for these gifts, right? And that's how you're going to make room for them is by cleaning house. You got to clean house in order for these gifts to come online. From You got to make room for these gifts. Your gifts are tied to your purpose, I'm hearing. So if you're feeling kind of lost at one point, know that you got to be patient and your gifts will come to you. Me learning astrology came to me. I did not search for it. If somebody would have told me that I was going to read astrology charts and cards, I would have been like, mm, not really. Five, six, seven years ago, it 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 came to me. And I, I, I called it in with my energy. I didn't know what I was calling in, but it just, it fell into my energy because it was part of my blueprint. It was part of my energy signature. And everybody has a different energy signature. Depending on your past lives, depending on the gifts that you're bringing into from past lives, once your blueprint is activated and has enough space to receive these gifts, your potential is unlo unlocked. And it's up to you to really move, move into it, make the decision to actually Go into something that you don't really know what's going to happen. You don't know what, you don't know the clients. You don't know the people who are watching you. You don't know. You're just having a lot of faith in God supporting your purpose. Saturn in Pisces is currently in Pisces. Will be in Pisces in 2024. Again, Saturn is the Lord of Karma. Restrictions, challenges. integrity responsibility so how are you being responsible in pisces energy pisces how, how how's your relationship to the divine pisces is the higher realms to your angels to your ancestors people from the non-physical realms that's pisces you can't see pisces energy you feel it Opposite sign, Virgo. Virgo, now I'm getting down to the bottom of what I need to do and what I need to build and grow and purify my body, my health. That's Virgo. Pisces is not tangible. It's invisible. How are you connecting to the invisible world? How are you practicing self-loving routines rituals there's some rituals routines that you have to incorporate it goes back to making space to commune with the divine you know whatever slow down or setback because that's saturn it's it, it's blocks think of saturn as a red light okay saturn is the red light jupiter is the green light like go we're expanding we're rewarding you but saturn also can reward us with time at the right time, by doing the work, by being in alignment, by being in your integrity. Saturn, again, is about karma. It's the law of cause and effect. What did you do? What you did has an, has a, an effect. The cause has an effect. So how much of your time and space are you creating to invite the divine into your life and your time and your space? For these miracles to come into your life, you're going to need to invite them in. Miracles are a change in perception. Like, oh my God, what a miracle. I see a miracle. Someone is helping me. That's a gift. People don't realize that God sends things to you on a daily basis that are gifts. And if you can't acknowledge the people or the situation or whatever it is, that's in front of you as a gift, how do you expect them to give you more gifts? Okay, so really think about that. The healers in your life, the people in your life that are help, trying to help you, that are triggering you, but are helping you. 
those are gifts from God. Can you see that? Spiritual sight. And that brings me to my next point. The heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye spiritual sight chakra, and the crown chakra, those will be activated and cleared for, for many who step into spiritual service, who are coming back to the self, North Node and Aries, who are taking time to really honor their needs, standing up for themselves, taking chances and doing something different, but that's in alignment with, with their true self. Um, letting go of codependency, slowly letting go of that. I know it's not a, an overnight thing, but at least acknowledging that certain things are codependent. All of your higher chakras will open up and that's where the gifts come from. Your heart chakra has to be open. If you want to do this type of, of work, if you want to align with blessings, it's the, you have to receive from the heart. But if your heart is closed and numb, and you're, you think that you're over it, you're over your past, you're over something, and there's nothing else to heal. You can't receive, you can't hear, you can't see. Your intuition is blocked. There's no, your intuitive sight, your spiritual sight, the knowledge from the divine is blocked. So you're going to need to be open, open to a lot of change and a lot of disruption of patterns. It's not going to be easy. It's chaotic. It can feel very chaotic and destabilizing, disorienting, confusing. Again, going back to what I said, this is about the dark night of the soul. This is about soul searching. But honoring that period of time in your life is beautiful. It's so magical. There's When you're on the other side of it, you're like, oh, now I understand why I have to go down into the pits of hell and really go and reclaim my fucking power. That's Pluto, that's Plutonic, that's Scorpio energies. And then I will slowly rise as the Phoenix, but it's a process, it's a process, right? The Phoenix rising, you know, you're not just the Phoenix rising. After a year or two years, it takes some time, it takes some work. Baby steps, Spirit is saying, baby steps. Everybody has trauma, we all have to start looking into this trauma. We have to start acknowledging where there is, there is trauma. That doesn't mean that we stop living and that we stop participating in, in physical world. It's about being more conscious of how we're participating in the physical 3D matrix. My final point here is practice being the observer. And it's funny, I have, a, I have a little Buddha statue and I'm, I turned on a, uh, some Buddha music, and there's like a Buddha on, on the television right now. Um, Buddha's energy is all about being the observer. Practicing non-judgment. Ouch, that's hard. How much, how much we judge ourselves, how much we judge others. Remember, when we judge others, we highly judge ourselves. Can you see that? If you're hard on other people, you judge other people, you talk maliciously about other people, I can imagine how much you're doing that to yourself in your own mind. I'm not good enough. There's a lot of, I'm not good enough. So I have to attack other people. I'm, I'm insecure. So I have to make sure that I, I, I let people know that they're doing everything wrong, but believe that you are doing that to yourself first and that is why and instead of looking at that it's easier to blame people it's easier to attack people it's easier to talk badly about people nobody's perfect and this is what we have to start realizing we are not perfect and that's okay we're human and being a human is really messy and it's be gonna become even messier if we don't take the time to really ground and understand why we do certain things, why we step into codependent relationships and addictive behaviors. So those were my notes for 2024, guys. Um, I'm going to look at the cards with you very, very briefly um, and see what comes through. So I showed you these ones, you know, so I asked Spirit, 
what can 2024 bring to the collective here watching me here on YouTube? And that was the card that came through. And I found that so beautiful and very, it felt liberating. It felt freeing. Blessings and miracles, everything has its gift, but can you see the gift? Can you see the gift? Again, really stepping into your gifts here, your, your talents, your skill sets. After a period of being really lost and confused, those gifts will come online. If you allow yourself time and space to reset and recover and grieve, a lot of these gifts will be stronger and stronger. And if you have gifts, they will be different. They'll, they'll be stronger. They'll be just different from, from before. Codependency, strong for 2024. So this was my question to the divine is, what is what will be the challenge for most people in 2024? Codependency, being attached to people, places, and things out of guilt, out of a place of inadequacy, limited mindset. People tend to think they can't, they can't attract better out there, that they can't get a better job, that they can't attract a healthier partner, that they can't attract a healthier tribe or French or friends or friendships. But that's not seeing your worth. If you know your worth and you believe with every fiber of your being that you are a good person and you have a lot to offer to yourself and to others, then you're going to trust that spirit is always going to support that always going to support your uh, your belief. If you don't believe, then forget it. That path is closed. Nothing will be brought to you. But you need to give this time. You need to give this a lot of awareness and acknowledgement. You need to be the observer. You need to stop jumping from one relationship or one thing to another out of fear. For some of you, it's, it's going to be about the experience. And if you want to experience going, you know, dating, you're going to hit a lot of roadblocks, a lot of roadblocks, a lot of disappointment, because people are not in alignment on, the, on these dating apps. People are not in alignment. And you made this wish to be in alignment, right? Or else you wouldn't be here watching me. You'd be watching Netflix or doing something else right now. I promise you, this would not be interesting to you. You made that wish. You made, you have that desire. It's in you. It's activated. So imagine going on these dates with these people who are not self-aware, who only participate in detrimental and unhealthy lifestyles. And that's okay. We are not judging. We are noticing. We are observing, right? This is about noticing. If I know that's not for me and that's not healthy, then why am I in it? Why do I continue perpetuating this cycle? Look, the world came out, coming back to the cards here. I need to close something out. What am I closing out? Pretending, not being honest with thyself. The seven of swords, this speaks of dishonesty. Not being in your integrity, pretending. Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm going to stay in this because they fulfill my X, Y, and Z desires. But it's, is that from, is that coming from a healthy place? Is that coming from a true, is, is, is this your truth? Is this how you truly feel? Is this how you truly feel about yourself? Staying in something that's just so, so. So watch out for this energy. It's here. It's in the spread. Believing that you deserve better and letting go and forgiving and accepting how people function. Other people who want to choose the path of resistance and of fear and who want to perpetuate, in, you know, a lack of integrity in their relationships or in their life. Who only think about the material world, king of, of pentacles, uses their material 
the world there we use that as as a as a way to get people to like them to accept them five of swords playing mind games drama manipulation it's time to cut that out queen of swords you gotta cut it cut it out and look what comes through the love, the self-love, love pouring into onto you. This is the divine giving you love. And you giving yourself this opportunity to receive. This is about receiving love. If you can't receive the divine's call, the divine's love, you say, hey, gotta cut this out. What are we cutting out? Attachment to money, to people who who think that they, they can provide in what you can't provide for yourself. This is about stepping into the Empress. You see the Page of Swords, noticing, observing, learning, not reacting from a place of fear and judgment and anger. Ten of Cups, this is where we're at. You know, noticing where these energies, these toxic drama, mind games, you're trying to get people to see you and accept you and validate you for all the wrong reasons. So there's going to be a lot of noticing and learning about what is your Ten of Cups? What's your Ten of Cups? It starts from inside. Cups are emotions. If I can't honor the difficult emotions, how am I supposed to notice and identify my fulfillment? What fulfills you? What truly fulfills you? What truly brings you fulfillment with others? Because the Ten of Cups is with other people. You're going to learn about this. Learning, observing, noting, acknowledging. Okay? Okay. You see, stepping out of these unrequited situations, this satisfaction, this satisfied, completely non, not content, fulfilled. Are you going to heed the call? Judgment. Stepping up, heeding the call. Spirit is going to be shaking things up for a lot of people here. The judgment call is all about, look, at the angel saying, okay, time to rise up, time to wake up. Wake up to this, where you're just sitting in discontentment, dissatisfaction. But you're pretending, you're pretending, and the Seven of Swords, that, this, that it's coming from a place of safety, security. Because the King of Pentacles provides security and safety financially to other, to himself and to other people. But it's coming with the Seven of Swords on top. So that's saying it's not an alignment. You're not being true to yourself by going after this type of energy. It comes with a lot of drama. It's time to cut this out, closing this out with the world, to receive God's support and love and faith. There's going to be shifts, again, with groups, social dynamics. A lot of you are going to meet new people that are like-minded, okay? So this is a good energy that I'm picking up on here. Someone you can learn from. They're saying friends, people that you talk to that you can learn from. This is about learning. Remember the Page of Swords is about learning, noticing, observing. Are you open to learning? That's part of the miracle and the blessings. That's the gift. That's the gift. Are you open to learning? I'm going to get some more cards here from my um, star suits that I forgot to name. This one right here. The Star Seed Oracle by Rebecca Campbell. Who's Ken? These ones. <laughs> what did I say before? Baby. I don't know if you see that. Baby steps. 
action. Follow your intuition before it makes sense. The things you're going to receive as intuitive hits will not make sense at first. That's what I was trying to say before, right? You have to be on the other side of it to say, oh, now it makes sense why I had to leave that job and that partnership and that friendship. But give yourself a chance. Give yourself a chance to really take the time to make these steps. What else am I getting with this? But it's a time for action, right? Call to action, the baby steps. You might not know where you're going when you take these steps. You might not know what's on the other side, but spirit will guide you. You are always supported and guided. The blue flame. <laughs> oh God, look what it says here. This is about awakening, spontaneous awakening, activation, integration. These are strong, powerful energies with, with, the, with the blue, um, the blue flame. These are galactic energies that are coming through a lot of people. Get ready to be activated. And remember, when we're activated, we get triggered. And triggers are teachers. Triggers teach us what we what what we need to pay attention to. They're triggering these baby steps. They're going to be activated. For some of you, this is happening, whether you like it or not. And I really hate that it's um, in reverse, but it says baby steps. And then it says the blue flame. So th these energies, these activations are going to ask a lot of people to wake up and integrate. It's time, okay, you know, you're learning, but now it's time to integrate. Sit with the energy. Make the actual change within yourself first. <laughs> I swear I'm like uh jump in this is Aries energy jump in take the plunge it says jump in okay and what does it say Andromedan energy so this is uh, a, a star system from Andromeda adventure say yes to change well I'm getting from some just I'm in awe <laughs> by certain things and this is part of my job and I'm I'm always in awe by the things that I channel and then it, it just it shows up in the cards and it's like here we go confirmation I think I'm going to end it here guys I'm so grateful for the ones who stuck around and who've um were open-hearted and minded to receive this transmission these transmissions 2024 is not an easy year but I am I am praying for your strength. A lot of strength is needed in 2024 for you to truly see your worth and value and that it's safe to jump in and experience something different and do it for yourself, for your health, for your body, for the, your mind, body, soul, and how that creates a ripple effect in other people's lives in your children's lives, in your students' lives, in your clients' lives, in your partners' lives, in, in your in your friends' lives. You know, this is this is why we're here. So but looking at what we're doing really does have an impact on our external world. So I'm really excited for a lot of you who are going to be initiated this year to really take action here. It's not going to be easy, like I said, but We'll, we'll be supporting you. They're saying your guides, your guides, ancestors, and angels. A lot of angelic energy wants to come in for a lot of you. You're not letting them in, though. You got to let angels help you. And to end with this, angels are not there to give you the answers. They're not there to give you a direct solution to your problems. They guide you. They guide you towards someone who can help you. They guide you towards something that can help you. They give you signs. They work with a lot of signs and synchronicities. So please do pay attention to that. They work this way. They ask you to put in the work first. You have to cultivate a co-creative relationship with your guides and your angels and the universe. You have to put in the work. So can you see the gift in that, the support in that? 
have faith that you are always being guided, supported, and protected. I'm wishing you all a beautiful and lovely and blessed start to your new year. I will be um, updating you uh, on here through my community tab on my new offerings for 2024. Again, I offer birth chart readings. I would like to offer a birth chart transit readings where I help you understand what are the current transits that are affecting your areas of life and how to uh, navigate them in a more conscious way. I also do card readings and energy clearings in the same session. So that's really beneficial for people who, you know, who need some answers and some guidance and a clearing. And I help you connect with your guides during that clearing. So it's it's all to help create a positive impact on the world. This is why I do this type of work. Um, I don't know how frequent I will be on YouTube, but I'm always guided and I always flow with the energy. And when I'm nudged, I show up and I'm of service. So thank you everybody for being here. Wishing you lots of love, health, joy, faith in 2024. Bye for now.